Okay, we're going to start with uh, our Grassroots Journalism Award. And this is to, uh, this will be given to Carl Denninger. Uh, he is the founder of the Market Ticker Blog and was the inspiration behind the group Fed Up USA. He writes in-depth commentary about the capital markets at the Market Ticker and runs several websites, including tickerforum.org, known as the Ticker Guy. He also has a popular YouTube channel and hosts a radio show at blogtalkradio.com. A former CEO of MCS Net in Chicago, uh, Denninger now trades capital markets for a living. I hear there's even a Facebook campaign to appoint Carl as Treasury Secretary. I don't know which, which administration was that, Carl? Tonight, uh, tonight we recognize uh, Carl for his tireless work exposing the unreported uh, costs of the federal bailouts and stimulus measures. Carl, on behalf of Accuracy Media, I present you with the 2009 Reed Irvine Accuracy Media Award for Grassroots Journalism. subprime and liar loans. The outrageous accounting treatment that I found within them led me to start writing. And as our current financial crisis has deepened, the web of falsehoods and fabrications has grown along with it. Much has been written about the Community Reinvestment Act, about the role of campaign contributions and PACs, and about what can, quite frankly, be considered corruption, both on Wall Street and in Washington, D.C that has brought about the destruction of our securitized credit markets, a 50% decline in the stock market, and both the inflation of and subsequent popping of the housing bubble. The market ticker serves as a chronology of many of these events as they have unfolded, including the backstories that you will not find in the Wall Street Journal. But this evening, I would like to challenge those here, and indeed all Americans. How does a nation with a strong conservative political presence allow this to happen? Does not conservatism rest on the principle of the rule of law rather than the rule of man? Do conservatives not argue daily for truth, justice, hard work, and as Ronald Reagan once said, rugged individualism? Is not the conservative movement supposed to be about full transparency in both government and finance, not layer upon layer of intentional obfuscation, deception, and lies? How did half of our nation's population, the half that defines itself as either conservative or moderate with conservative leanings, come to believe that it was okay to lie on a mortgage application, to put together thousands of loans into securities that were so complex that the printed documentation spanned thousands of pages to sell a mortgage note to a consumer knowing full well that they could never pay it back, to sell a security out the front door of a business to a customer while shorting it in the next room. How is it that our government has become so corrupt that Stanford Financial, now accused of a massive fraud spanning more than a decade, gave $250,000 to the Republican senatorial campaign and nearly a million to the Democratic senatorial campaign. Their lobbying efforts successfully killed a bill that might have uncovered that fraud years ago in a Senate committee. Partly as a consequence of this, over $8 billion in uninsured certificates of deposit held by Americans disappeared. Someone clearly got the best government money can buy, but it certainly was not us. How did Congress look the other way while our nation's leaders, allegedly conservatives themselves, locked senators and representatives in a room one dark September night and predicted the end of the world 
unless Henry Paulson was given a blank check for $700 million that this nation did not have and would have to borrow. We have descended the economic slope to where we are today because we, as Americans and conservatives, are willing to tolerate just one little lie in the pursuit of profit. As we have now seen, one little lie, repeated often enough, becomes one gigantic mess. We had another example today. As I waited to board the aircraft to come here, AIG, it was reported, is now going to have all of their credit default swaps backstopped by the United States government. That is another 300 to 800 billion dollars effectively appropriated by the administration without a vote of Congress, without any mention anywhere, and, oh by the way, their stock went up by 40% last night after the market closed. Maybe a little insider trading involved in that as well? Private capital, as a consequence of all of this, has fled our nation's markets, not only because of losses, but because of fraud, corruption, and the willful blindness of our legislators and regulators. That capital, contrary to popular belief, forms the foundation of our credit markets and our economy. Fully two-thirds of all of the capital out there does not come from banks, but rather from private investors and sovereign funds. Our stock market has collapsed not because of economic recession, but because that capital has retreated overseas or into the mattress, where it cannot be stolen by those on Wall Street through their willing and complicit enablers in Washington, D.C. Without that capital available to fund lending and, indeed, economic activity in our economy, which government is incapable of replacing, we will experience a depression greater than what we went through in the 1930s. We have a challenge before us as a nation, and as conservatives in particular, to tell the truth, to once again stand for law and order, and to demand that the bezel, or the undercurrent of fraud and deceit in our markets, be met not with a wink and a nod, but with indictments, prosecutions, and imprisonment. to express our spirit of rugged individualism and free enterprise as Americans. He rolls in his grave tonight, along with Alexander Hamilton, our first Treasury Secretary, at the abuses visited upon our nation over the last decade in our markets and our government. I stand here this evening to call conservatives throughout this nation to action, to refuse to tolerate that tiny little <laughs> lie any longer to flush out the fraud, abuse, and concealment in all things financial, whether in government or private enterprise, to restore the soundness of our capital markets, not by borrowing trillions of dollars we do not have and showering it upon Wall Street and Main Street alike, but by demanding that every balance sheet be transparent, every financial statement truthful and complete, and every transaction honest and easily understood. Our nation can get through this difficult time. We can rebuild our capital markets and restore the health of our finances, both as a nation and individually. To do so, we must recognize that whether we are a government or an individual, it is not possible to spend more than we make. You cannot borrow your way to prosperity. And we can only retain and grow our nation's birthright as the bastion of capitalism so long as the rule of law triumphs over those who would lie, cheat, and steal for a buck. May we find it within ourselves to put these principles into action and restore America's status as the world's economic engine. I look forward to the day that the market ticker will no longer have a purpose in providing commentary on the obfuscation of our government in matters economic, along with the malfeasance and mispheasance of robber barons disguised as capitalists. With the help of conservatives everywhere, that day, along with a return to prosperity for our great nation, will arrive soon. Thank you.
Thank you, Carl. I think you can see why he was a worthy recipient of our award tonight.